Okay, let's work on wrangling um, an efficient legend into our layout. It's up to you if you want to include one legend that represents both maps, and we can do that because we used the same range of colors to represent the same values um, between the two data sets. So one can work because the same color on each map represents the same uh, change in temperature. You could also use two, and that might help draw attention to the max value in a cleaner way. Um, they're going to look very similar because, again, the colors match the numbers, but it would allow you to uh, focus on the um, max value for your, you know, your one time period versus the other, because I would guess that there's going to be a difference there. And so if you want to draw your audience attention to that, two legends might actually be better. When you insert a legend, remember that it's going to reference the data set that you have highlighted. So from my insert tab, I can insert a legend. I'm going to draw a space for it. Um, I am, you know, constantly disappointed with how hard it is to make a good legend in ArcGIS Pro. It's certainly not impossible, but I think you have to get into the weeds uh, way more than you should have to. But I'll show you a couple of tricks. If I right click and go into the properties for the legend, um, one thing I like to do right away is, let's see here. Oh, sorry, go into the legend properties, which is on this first tab. Uh, notice that we can choose to not show the layer name or the heading because those are relatively ugly. Um, we're going to add our own text to it. So you could go in and change this to degrees Celsius, but I think it's uh, more efficient for a reader to see the unit right behind the number and not have to disconnect it that way. So I'm kind of a big fan of putting the units of measure right with the value. Um, but what we want to look at here is the patch width and height. Uh, right now it's set at 24 by 12. We, this is the patch here, and I want that to be much bigger. Um, I'm thinking more like 200 points, and then we can exaggerate that by making it a little bit wider. Uh, then we can manipulate it a little bit easier now that we've kind of stretched it out a little bit. Um, we definitely want the red. I want to make these horizontal. I think that would look better. So we can go back into, it's under element here, uh, and we can rotate it. I can never remember where these things are. Trial and error, we're going to rotate it 270 degrees to keep the increases on the right and the decreases on the left. Um, we could spend a really good deal of time getting the numbers to draw um, on top or below, but sitting horizontally as well, so we don't have to turn our head, which makes it harder to read a legend. Um, but I'm going to do this in either PowerPoint or Canva. I'm going to um, show you guys how to use Canva really quick. It's a free online tool that makes basic graphic manipulations really easy. To do that, though, you're going to need to take a screenshot of this, and there's a bunch of different ways you could do that. We've got this set up on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, so the resolution's pretty good. You could do an export. You could share it and um, export your layout and then, you know, put it in something that you're familiar with and crop it. You could even crop it in Canva if you want to. Um, you can use the screen grab tool on your computer. I have mine set up because I do it so often um, to be able to grab just a region of interest. So what I want to do is make it as big as possible so that I've got the best resolution to work with on my screen. And then I'm going to use my screen grab. Uh, you can figure out your own to grab this guy. It's copied to the clipboard. And then I'm going to go into Canva. So C-A-N-V-A, um, there's just different templates you can use. I'm going to use poster because it is going to preserve the resolution. And then I'm going to control V to paste my color ramp in there. Um, much easier to work with in here. So uh, we can add text. It adds it for you. Maybe we want the end to read 4.5 degrees Celsius. Um, we can choose to label that above or below, and uh, you can resize this using the tools up here. You can uh, type in what you want. Um, yeah, however you, however you want to do that. Uh, let's see if I can make this bigger, just so we can move things around a little bit easier. So um, 
this is the maximum increase in temperature for my shorter time period. My other one had an increase of three degrees as the maximum for the 30 year time period. And I might wanna label that on here. Um, I might want to have some kind of annotations that point that out to people because that would be really effect, um, effective. So um, we might want to have though nice e equal divisions. We don't have any temperatures that were decreasing this much, only as much as maybe a half of a degree Celsius. So let's put in some markers. Um, you can go into the elements and in lines and shapes, just kind of look for something that you want to use. I think this one looks kind of cool. I just saw this go by, so maybe we'll try this one. It's just a bar with two things on the end. If you get it close and use the shift key, it'll lock it to a vertical. Um, we might want that at zero, exactly. And then we might want one at, um, I'm going to use shift, actually I'll use control C, control V. to get a copy of it. Let's drop one where we suspect one might be. Uh, control V again. There's our second one. Control V again. So we're at, we're at zero, one, two, three, and four degrees. Now, if the end is four and a half, we want this to be, we're kind of eyeballing it here, agreed? Um, but if this is four and this is four and a half, that might work out pretty well. Let's just see how it works. Um, let's make another one at negative one. And now if I use the shift key to, to select each one of these, I can evenly distribute them. Let's see, under position, I can space them evenly horizontally. Um, I still, it locked it in at zero and now they're distributed evenly. And if this looks close enough to half, for you, then we're in good shape. If you want to tweak that, um, you know, and it's close, but maybe that's um, a little bit more reasonable, it's up to you how picky you want to be about this, but it should be uh, not distractingly incorrect. So I'm just going to do it one more time, position, space them horizontally. It still looks pretty good. Did it work? Well, let's just run with it. Okay, so we technically don't need this end of the color range, but we can leave it there just for balance and symmetry, that's fine. Um, you might wanna label these guys. Yeah, you know, and you'll have to decide how you wanna do it. Maybe that'll be clunky to have a lot of units. So maybe you just stick, um, whoops, okay, now I'm running into problems where it's too small to grab. So let me just redo that really quick. Oh, you little pain, there we go. Okay, so there's zero. Maybe you want to have some text over here that uh, says, And maybe you want to, you know, oopsie, put that over here. Uh -huh. Isn't that so fun when someone says, look how easy it is, and then it's clunky and ridiculous. Uh, and then this guy would say negative one. Um, yeah, I don't know if I love that yet, but um, this is one of the things I want you guys to mess around with um, in addition to the symbology. Downloading the data and setting up two data frames should be a repetition for you, but this is where we're going to start getting into the, the nitty gritty of making a good map. Um, I would say this is a bit too big. Okay, um, you decide how you want to set this guy up, um, but I think this might you know, deserve some annotations as far as um, pointing out to your audience that the, the temperature, the maximum temperature has increased, you know, over time or as we look to the more recent years. Um, obviously, you're going to want to label all these one degree, two degree, three degree, four degree. Um, yeah, and then what you'll do 
is export this thing. And this is where Canva gets a little bit, um, you have to be a little bit sneaky. Uh, Canva will let you download. You might get one free one or something like that. So if you use the download button, you could print this to PDF. Uh, you could, you can make <clears throat> lots of uh, different things for yourself. My kid has made whole animations in Canva. Um, you could export it to PNG. Um, that's a high quality um, image uh, way to do it. I think that works great. So if you download it, it'll work. Um, I don't know how many free ones you get. So if you run into trouble with that, the other thing you can do is just go back to our first trick of um, taking a high resolution screenshot of it, right? So you could maximize it on your screen um, and then just grab a screenshot when you have it all dialed in. You could save that as a PNG, um, or you could um, just, well, you could save it as a PNG and then insert it back as an image into ARC, or just copy it to the clipboard and paste it into ARC that way. A lot of different ways to do it. I think it would be probably good to have uh, an image of it so that you can mess around with it, but um, that's what I would recommend doing for the legend. The idea is to shoot for something along these lines. Right? These are different values, but this could be your you know, maximum increase in temperature for uh, your earlier time period, your later time period, and then you know, the min and max uh, it, uh, decreases in temperature over time and how those uh, rotate around this neutral point. So this is kind of what you're shooting for. Of course, you can make your, your legend um, vertical instead of horizontal, um, but... Yeah, spend time on this. This is um, one of the big goals of, of this lab. Questions, let me know.